Hey, Ryan. What's going on? How you doing? I'm doing well. What about you? I'm doing good. Uh, you know, it's, it, we spoke near the end of last year, right before you were supposed to have a fight. Obviously, that didn't kind of come out uh, as as we all expected. Obviously, UFC three or, or excuse me, uh, Bellator three hundred fell apart for you. I mean, when you go through something like that, especially because it was it was a historic event, where's the disappointment level for this? Uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, pretty big. You know, uh, throughout my career, I've uh, I really I pulled out of a fight one time because I, I tore my knee. Other than that, I've never pulled out, and then uh, I really haven't had a lot of guys pull out. You know, and so um, compound that with uh, you know what rumors we were hearing about Bellator, you know, getting acquired and all that kind of stuff. I really wanted to get that fight in, you know, because I didn't know what the road looked like, looked like after that. Is, is it going to be in May? Is it going to be in summer? You know, because I've kind of been through that before. And so I was just kind of up in the air, um, you know. And so pretty disappointing going through a training camp, you know, then the week up, basically. I, I got I to gotta call out my son's football game on Saturday, this Saturday before the Saturday fight, you know, week week before and, you know. There was still hope, this and that. And then Wednesday it was like, I was like, I gotta know, man. You know, fights in three days, and then it was a, it was a no. So, um, yeah, it sucked. You know, um, Bellator they took care of me though. You know, which was uh, they didn't have to, which was uh, which was awesome of them. You know, but my whole deal was like, okay, you know, fight Fedor, I don't get, I don't fight this time. Is it going to be a year and a half before I fight again? You know, so the whole PFL thing and every Bellator deal went through. And then luckily they had, you know, this fight coming up in February. So it was pretty, pretty early. So my whole deal was like, I don't want to wait till May and all that kind of stuff. So obviously everything worked out for you as well in that case, but you know, now that, that acquisition that we heard was going to happen did in fact go through, of course, you, you're someone who has been through major promotional change. This one, the first time was by choice, you know, you decided to come to, uh, to Bellator from the UFC, yeah. This one a little bit different, you know. But you've experienced change, you know. How much did things change for you once PFL did acquire Bellator? Um, I mean, not much really, you know. Um, I my whole thing is, you know, I have forty something fights, you know. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a vet, this and that, you know. I have. I've changed promotions before, like you said, by choice. And, um, you know, on this one, you know, it, for me, it was just like the unknown basically. Um, but that, that was, uh, you know, handled pretty quickly as far as like, Hey, we're doing this champ versus champ fight for me. That's awesome. You know, I started kind of, kind of, uh, you know, been a champ for a long time since 2017 in Bellator, you know, I started, you know, I'd have to do a lot more. It started to get into a lot more rematches, you know, because it's being at that level, you know, and who, you know, a guy might lose, come back, make it back to the title fight, you know, so it kind of got stagnant a little bit there, you know, so this whole champ versus champ thing was very welcomed, you know, I love doing like the you know, heavyweight Grand Prix and trying something new, and so this is on those lines, I'm, I'm excited, rejuvenated, you know, and uh, you know, you need that in your career, and so, you know, um, it, it's been, it's been, it's probably the best thing that could have happened, you know, in, in my mindset. Sure, sure. Now, obviously, the the news of uh, of the purchase comes out uh, on the Monday, you know, following three hundred one, right? Um, when we hear about that news, I'm sure you kind of hear about it when just about everybody else does. But when do you first get your first interaction with the people from PFL? You know, I kind of we were all kind of in the dark. You know, I think the Bellator people, you know, and guys that I know that that work for Bellator, we I'm like, hey, guys, give me some guys, give me some inside info. You know, and they're like, we really don't know. You know, my manager didn't know, and, uh, you know, he's connected with everybody. And it's just one of those deals where we're like, all right. And that's what I was scared of, you know. But um, we started hearing, like, rumblings, like, hey, potentially, hey, be ready for February 24th. Um, you know, I'm like, okay, I got to know because I, I bring guys in from Brazil and all that. And then, you know, a week or two pass, I'm like, hey, is this, you know, getting towards the end of uh, um, December there? And I'm like, hey, is this happening? And my manager was like, hey you know, they told me for you to get ready. And so I flew guys in and all that started getting ready. My first interaction really with them, you know, they flew me to London 
uh, to meet the Sheikh, you know, the, of entertainment over there in Saudi and got to meet a couple of the guy higher ups there. And then uh, we went to Miami and did a, you know, four day kind of um, bunch of pictures, interviews, press conference. And I got to meet kind of the whole staff there, um, you know, and everything they're doing is, is over the top. It, it's, it's pretty unbelievable, you know, going into a, um, all their shoots and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about it. And, and like I said, I'm just super excited. It's, it's something fresh and new, you know, for myself, you know, but for the fans too, they've always wanted this promotion versus promotion kind of deal. Sure. Sure. Now, obviously, you know, you're excited, of course, but the other side of the coin is, you know, a lot of people you used to work with for six years under Bellator, you know, Scott Coker, these guys, you're, you're not working with them anymore. It's, it's, it's a different world for you. When you look back at that, that period of your career, those six years with, you know, let's say former Bellator, right? Um, yeah. What, what kind of stands out for you outside the cage? We're not even talking about the results inside the cage, but just your time with the company, with, with Bellator as we knew it. Yeah, you know, I've had, a, I've been very fortunate enough to go, you know, I went to the Ultimate Fighter, I was in the UFC for 25, you know, um, came over to Bellator. You know, when I came over to Bellator, it, you know, it's kind of cliche, but it felt like, you know, a family atmosphere, you know, especially as, a, you know, I, I was kind of the outsider coming in, um, you know, but as I, as I, uh, you know, had fights within that promotion, uh, got to know a lot of the people, you know, we were, you know, I'm still friends with most of them and, and it's just, a, there's a good group of people running that, running that show, you know, and I can call each and every one of them up, you know, we're in different promotions. It's kind of like, Hey, your manager kind of handles that and you come and do your deal and, and that's it. And so, um, you know, fights, we'd hang out after and all that kind of stuff. And it was just, it was just a different dynamic for sure. You know, and, uh, um, like I said, I, I can call, you know, the fighter operations guys and be like, Hey, you know, um, would this work in fight week? You know, can I move something, this and that schedule a little bit, you know, to accommodate, accommodate us and everything, everything on, on those lines was amazing, you know? And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it, it's a sad kind of deal as far as, you know, I want to be on Bellator 300, you know, and finish that out, you know, on that Bellator card, you know, but it is what it is. There's a lot of people coming over a lot of the same faces that, um, are still working with PFL, you know, and, and Bellator does continue. Of course, of course, and, you know, there there is going to be a Bellator 302, you know, we got the announcement mm. about that, and and it is, looks like it's going to just be Bellator fighters so far, we've only heard about four names, but they were all Bellator men and women, not necessarily, even though it's technically the same roster, you're all PFL right now, but, but it does seem like there's a focus on making this Bellator, is that something that kind of your understanding of is you're going to be mostly, or, you know, fighting on these Bellator cards, plus, of course, these crossovers? So my understanding, and this really just comes from uh, the press conference, was, you know, they're going to, you know, kind of keep uh, PFL and do do their seasons, you know, and then the Bellator roster is going to go through and do their championship series and have a title fight on each card. And I think they're kind of going around the world in different places. And then they're going to have uh, this whole champion versus champion once a year, you know, so when the PFL season ends, um, you know, and obviously they're going to schedule the Bellator fights around it, that they're going to do this whole champion versus champion once a year. And they have the ability to pluck guys out and be like, hey, I want this Bellator fighter in the PFL tournament. You know, hey, I want Bader fight Nagano. I want, you know, this and that. So they have the kind of free range to kind of do a little bit of everything. But I, I, as I understand it, there's still going to, Bellator is still going to continue you know, um, maybe you know, even bigger and better. Sure, sure. And, and of course, that is still going to involve elbow strikes, as we understand it, which was kind of like the whole thing everyone was wondering, like, what's going to happen if, if uh, PFL acquires Bellator and everyone becomes a PFL fighter and then nobody can throw elbow strikes anymore because they do that in the, in the season tournament. Uh, it sounds like that's not going to affect someone like you. But my question is, do you, do you know how that will, uh, how that applies to, this crossover fight or elbow strikes allowed in, in the, the versus. Yeah. They, they're allowed in this whole champion versus champion. Um, yeah. You know, I get it with the PFL with the no elbows cause they're going through a tournament and they don't, you know, you can cut real easy with elbows and, and um, you know, so they want to kind of limit that. So guys can carry on and not have big suspensions and all that kind of stuff, you know, so that, that was my question too, you know, and then we, we got the word that it, they are allowed. So, um, you know, that's, that's big for us, you know, 
I mean, you're big for me, you know, my fighting style and everything like that too. So, uh, they are allowed and, uh, yeah, everything, every fight is going to be, it'll be a three round fight for all the championship fights. Um, the Bellator and PFL titles are not on the line, but there, there is a special, you're going to have belts for the winner, which, sure, or, whatever sure. that is, champions, champ, champion or whatever. Like a little prize to put on the wall. Yeah. 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 You know, but then, uh, but you walk away from that fight, and if you win, you know, you're like, hey, I'm pretty much a PFL champ and the Bellator champ, too, you know? Sure, I guess you could look at it that way, especially this first year. So your opponent, of course, is Henan Fajeda. Big guy. He's huge. Uh, I mean, yep. you're not a small guy, but you're standing next to him at the weigh-ins, and you he kind of dwarfs you. Know, you know, it's just what it is. What it yeah. is. But you come in, you're the wrestler, right? The, the wrestling yeah. is kind of that that equalizer. When you see a big guy, I'm sure you're like, oh, that's a lot of, a lot of space for me mm -hmm. to get in take down how do you assess kind of the matchup here is that is that accurate yeah, yeah that's accurate you know big guys you know uh they have trouble like he's very athletic right you can do a standing backflip and all that kind of stuff big guys have sometimes have a, a lack of i want to say like control or whatnot with their big bodies you know especially in the grappling and wrestling department you know especially a guy like him that's 260 65 69 or eight however tall he is you know, and then watching, you know, film study and all that kind of stuff, you know, that's his weakness is being on the ground, you know, um, you know, his cardio, um, his ground game is probably the weakest in his game. You know, he's, uh, he's big athletic. He can obviously strike. He uses his distance good, you know, but if you look at his losses or even some of his wins, you know, he, he gets taken down, he cannot get back up. And, and these are with guys that are like 14 and 15, records and stuff like that you know um he is a great fighter you know he's he's a champion in you know his own right you know but you look at records you look at who who i fought who he's fought you know you you can't you can't compare them you know i've i've been in there with champions former champions the who's who of mma you know and uh um that's got to be in his mind you know being like all right i fought some tough guys but I haven't fought his le level of competition and he's beating these guys. His strength is my weakness, you know? And uh, yeah, when we kind of squared off, I could kind of see it in his eyes, you know, he, he's pretty nervous and, and kind of thinking like, man, is this a different level? You know, a lot of things running through your head. And I've been here, like I said, I'm a vet 40 something fights. I've been in, you know, huge, huge fights, main events, five rounds, all that kind of stuff and, and did well. Sure. And then the last question I have for you, and, and this is kind of not related to this particular fight, but I think it's hard to ignore here. The Dean Nemkov, he comes over too. He's fighting on this same card. He yep. gave up the, the light heavyweight title. He wants to move up to heavyweight. He's made it clear. Uh, that puts him right in the same range as you. I mean, I don't know how quickly you're looking to get back in there after this particular fight, but uh, I mean, are you looking at it as, a, you know, assuming he gets through this fight, or maybe even independent of it, because it's it's more of a bragging rights thing, right? Yeah. Do you think he is the next guy that that either you want to face or that you should face? Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, I'm looking for those big fights. You know, there's Nagano on the horizon, and I I just don't know. If, am I getting pulled back into Bellator? Am I going to do something like a Nagano fight, like something like that? Um, you know, um, definitely down the road. But there, you know, um, I do I do want to fight Linton Vassell again because he was the fight you know that he pulled out. You know, and uh, it's just one of those deals where we were training for him. You know, all you're obviously thinking about him the whole time. And then that doesn't happen. And you're like, man, you know, I want that. You know, that would be one I'd want immediately. And then, of course, Vadim down the road. Uh, but there's Nagano in there, too. So there, there, those are, that's what I'm kind of looking. Number one, I would like to go in there, you know, beat Hannon. And then, you know, have that big, big fight with uh, Nagano down the road. That was that would be my my. Uh, my on my wish list right there that's the dream scenario yeah yeah so but like like you're saying a lot of moving parts with pfl and bellator you know it just kind of seeing where they where i fit in there 